Um, there's a, you know, I think a few uh, uh, points that that are that are kind of exciting to note uh, that the the peak uh, velocity of the of, of dragon during abort was uh, uh, more than more than double the speed of sound. It went to Mach 2.2. Um, and achieved an altitude of 40 kilometers or 130,000 feet, 131,000 feet. So uh, I think these are pretty exciting uh, uh, specs, you know, to be um, for the for the sport to have uh, gone more than three times the altitude of a, of a typical airliner, um, and uh, you know, and, and and to accelerate that rapidly away from uh, a booster. And I think if you, if you saw in the video that you know the booster actually exploded. Uh, as, as, as expected, um, so that was that was very exciting, and um, and the it, it landed in uh, r relatively high uh, uh, winds out, out, uh, at the ocean level, which I think helps us envelope the mission for uh, when it is crewed, uh, since we will, uh, we, we expect this to be sort of a an enveloping condition for the uh, winds at uh, sea level at the recovery site uh, for when when uh, crews are launched. So overall, um, as far as we can tell thus far, it is a picture-perfect mission. Uh, it went as well as, as well as one could possibly expect. And again, dedication. this, this is a reflection of the dedication of the hard work of the, the SpaceX NASA teams to achieve this goal. The, so the, uh, the, the hardware necessary for the first crewed launch, uh, we believe, will be ready by the end of February. Um, However, there's still a lot of work once the hardware is ready to uh, just cross-check everything, quad triple check, quadruple check, uh, go over everything, everything again um, until this, every, every stone has been turned over three or four times. Um, and, um, and, and there's also the, the, the schedule for getting to Space Station, so, uh, because Space Station has a lot, of, a lot of things going to it, so what's the right timing for this? Um, and the, the the sort of collective wisdom at this point is that uh, um, we will we, we, we think the we're, 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 we're highly confident the hard, the hardware will be ready in Q1, most likely in February, but no later than March. And that uh, we think it, it, it appears probable that uh, the the first crude launch would occur in the second quarter. Obviously, this requires um, on, uh, ongoing discussions with, with with NASA, but I think it would be quite quite cool to use the, uh, the the boats that we are using to catch the fairing once that is is really well established to catch the catch dragon as it's coming in from uh, from from orbit, um, and then that would uh, alleviate some of the constraints around a water landing. Um, and um, but, you know, that, that's obviously it's, 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 there's some time before for making that happen, and we obviously need to re recover uh, fairings reliably before we would consider trying to catch the uh, catch the dragon. Uh, but I think that would be also an improvement as opposed to landing in the water. No, I don't, I don't think this has it's it's not directly relevant to Starship, uh, um, as we do not expect to use uh, parachutes on Starship. Uh, uh, albeit, like the 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 only reason Starship is happening is because of uh, the progress made uh, with uh, uh, you know essentially w w all the work done by by NASA and, and others before SpaceX even started and the support that we've received um, after starting, um, without which Starship would not be possible. I was just looking to see if, if I'd received an update, but um, I think the uh, re recovery vessel is just is just securing it right now, so. We do not have additional information at this time.